Happy Friday. It's time for the Uncle Brian. Yee Weekend review roundup video. Do I sound good or what? But I feel good. That's all that matters. Like he said, strained vocal cords. So it'll uh, fix itself when it decides to do it. It can take time. Main thing is I feel good. Felt great yesterday getting back to the VTH. I really missed doing what I do there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's been a while since since I was there previously when we started getting sick. Uh, uh, a little bit different today. And this is because of something that I observed uh, a few days back last week. Uh, Will did a, a live. I caught a little bit of it. I found out later he told me he did a second live that I was unaware of until he told me himself. You know, do, doing music and, you know, with no one. Up at Wild Rose Garage in Canada. You know, he's been, hey, how you feeling, you know? I mean, he knew what was going on with me before I, you know, let anyone know, you know, how sick I was. And, uh, doing the music and say, hey, you know, you want, I might do another one. You know, he knows I'm close by to Boston. You know, a lot of great bands came out of Boston. Aerosmith, Che Giles, The Cars, Modern Love, Until Tuesday. You know, and when I was a young kid, all these bands, I guess it depends where you live in the country. Pe people that grew up in the Los Angeles area when they were young kids and teenagers, they got to see the Motley Crew, you know, the Poison, uh, <laughs> You know, they got to see all these Guns N' Roses, all these bands that came out of L.A. They got to see them in local clubs before they were famous, you know. And all of these guys, they changed members. Like, Modern Lovers was a pretty popular band around Boston. Their drummer, David Robinson, when he saw the cars play at a club, he got to be friendly with Rick Ocasek, and Rick fired their drummer, and David quit Modern Lovers, joined the cars, and he became their career drummer until they, you know, disbanded uh, and we saw them you know you know we i was like you know a kid i saw aerosmith play at some fucking festival over in fall river you know free concerts just to get exposure to get out to the public so we said hey you know next time we do it you want to join and i said well if i have a voice i will so uh and i caught a little bit of it you know what they were talking about initially and uh, i still got a little bit of a cough <coughs> <coughs> hear it rattling but now all the rest of that shit's coming out I got two more days on these antibiotics to run out this prescription and, uh, and then we take it from there <coughs> now we're talking about you know YouTube what the guys are doing on here I've said it countless times before and people get pissed off when I say it but I'm going to say it again you know this whole YouTube car thing uh, they're going to restore cars. And, you know, I learned from a very young age, from my uncle and Bobby Tasker's old man being around there when they were prepping their cars, their stalkers, super stalkers, to go to an NHRA event. You know, proper planning and preparation is essential. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. I coughed and my nose was going to drip a little bit. I don't want no fucking boogies dripping out of my nose during a video. That would be gross. At least I don't fight. But, uh, you know, they would go over things and over things and over things, getting the car ready from bumper to bumper. Not just engine, clutch adjustment, transmission, suspension, everything. Proper planning and preparation. And anything you do is essential to have any chance of success. You go into something just winging it with no fucking plan, you get yourself caught up in your own confusion. You're going to forget this. You're going to forget to do that. Or maybe I should have checked this one more time. And then you end up in one big ball of confusion. Cost the fuck. Chances are things will not turn out well. Even if you're painting your fucking house. Doesn't matter what it is. You know. I'm a firm believer of proper planning and preparation. When it comes to car restorations. You take a look at what you want to do. You have a plan. You will get what type of budget you have to work with to think about what will be involved in this particular vehicle you're looking at you want to restore what it's going to need will it need extensive body work how's the frame 
It's an older car before unibodies and how's the frame? How's the drivetrain, engine, transmission, rear end? How's the suspension? Right down to fucking bushings. You know? Because these guys restoring these cars, they plan on driving them, enjoying them. Or even if they're restoring them as a business to sell, to hopefully make a profit. They don't want their investment to be so high that when they look at the market value of what they're going for, no matter what they do, they're doing it at a loss. You know, they say, is it worth doing it? You might want to walk away from it, but think about another type of restoration. There are many car restorers that what they're looking at in order to restore this one car, they need a donor car, a second donor car, in some cases a third donor car. They need a fender. I think things change these days with all the repot parts. You can pretty much build a car from the ground up, part by part by part, going online ordering repot parts. You know, some are steel, some are fiberglass. They look the same. You know, I know people are oh, repot parts are cheap steel. They're going to rust and rot out. Guess what? These old cars rust and rot it out too, depending where you live. You know, you get winters, rolled salt, whatnot. Yeah, your car. When I was in Arizona, man, it was rare to see a car with body rot, let me tell you. Very rare. And so when guys look for all the antique classic cars of certain states, you know, they. They gravitate towards because they know these cars haven't been exposed to all the elements that cause them to rust and rot out, you know. And they look at what's going into it. But the guys that want to restore a car for themselves, there's a lot of factors that need to go into it, you know. And they have an end game. They want a particular result. And now they got to factor all these things in. Then you hear about low budget builds here, you know, Sanford and a lot of them. Low budget build. No, it's junk builds. It's fucking junk builds. Low budget build isn't about throwing a bunch of junk together. It's about spending your money wisely. Investing it in the areas that it needs to be invested in. Mostly to be safe and drivable, dependable, reliable. But then again, Sanford and these guys have no intention of ever driving these cars. They're fucking... You know what I call them on here? These guys? YouTube content cars. Nothing more, nothing less. Content cars. These cars are just going to fucking sit there as props. Shaffney doing one. How many of some of my other buddies do? Some guy with a Mustang. Oh, he's swapping a bunch of fucking JB Weld on a Holly carburetor on a car that's still sitting there. He's still ain't fucking driving the thing. How many years has that been? You know, it's all about getting attention, building a channel, making money on here. These guys have no heart, no desire for their cars. They don't have, you know, I'm old school and I will not apologize for it. You know, my day, man, you know, doing something with a car was a labor of love. When we'd go out, you know, and we're going to tear our engine out and send the heads out, you know, send the block out. We did all the work ourselves. That's the biggest savings. That's the biggest savings in a low-budget build is being able to do a majority of the work yourself that is very costly if you have to pay someone else to do it. You know how to do decent body work? You can straighten out a body. Even if you've got to cut out some metal, braid some new metal in and do it right. You know, with a skin coat of Bondo, not six fucking inches. Or wear a Bondo on it. You're able to lay down a decent paint job. That's where your savings are. That's where your whole budget comes in. Because you know, you're not paying a body shop three, four, five grand to do your fucking body. You're going to do it yourself. Yeah, it may take a little time here and there when you're off time because you're working a job. you got to live. you got bills to pay. You don't throw all your money at a car. You know, you have other priorities in life. Uh, that's where your savings are. You're able to tear that in. In my case, I have to admit, I had a big advantage. My friend Ray Charles raised automotive and auto parts and machine shop. He's still in business today. He took it over from his father when his father retired. He did all my boring and honing and head porting and valve work and port matching. He did it after hours. We'd hang out there and talk. And he actually tried teaching me how to do things and I didn't want to learn. I, I could have learned how to do the machine work. I didn't want to. I didn't really want to do it. For me, the fun was taking it apart, getting it back together, getting it set up, getting it running, tweaking it, tuning it, and getting it out on the fucking road and driving the fucking thing and racing it. That's how we all were. We had a passion, a desire, and we had that end game. We saw what we wanted to happen. We wanted that thing to get together. And the real joy was being able to get our hands into it and do it ourselves, to disassembly and assembly. You know, I had the opportunity to learn how to do engine machine work. I just 
didn't really want to do it. I wanted to do the other aspect of it. You know? We had a vision, a goal. These guys on YouTube, they have no goal. They have no vision. They, they know these guys will never see the light of day out on a fucking road. It's just something they can tinker with here on YouTube to hopefully build a channel, get views to make money. They don't have their heart in it. They have no desire. They have no passion for cars. The only desire they have is to be on here to make money with a car that they can milk it for all it's fucking worth, hoping to get views that will never turn out to be anything good in the end. Have a great weekend. Have fun. Stay safe.